Well, it's a gorgeous day here in Ripon today. Blue skies, lovely winter's day. But I'm gonna, we've got to go inside because I've got a fabulous painting to show you. That's right. In fact, three Drop Dead Gorgeous Antiques we're going to show you. You'll get the auction valuation, the description, and then you can watch them sell in auction and put your valuation on. See if you can beat the expert. I'm David Harper, and this is David Elstop. This one is my favourite lot in the sale. I just absolutely love this. Go on, tell us about it. Utterly charming. Um, it's by a Victorian artist, a Birmingham artist called John Fitz Marshall. Um, just a lovely dog picture, isn't it? It's got a fabulous title on the back. It's called The Porcher's Couple. Um, he's quite a good artist, John Fitz Marshall. I mean, his auction records look up very well. I actually sold one by him years ago, probably 10 years ago. It made, did really well. What sort of money did he make 10 years ago? It made about six or eight, six or eight thousand, I can't remember. It was in that area. Wow, big money. Um, it was a similar scene, a couple of dogs, but by a fireside. Um, whereas we have a couple of terriers here and the guns there and just a lovely picture and really good for the American market as well. They love their dog paintings in America. So I've already spoken to a couple of American buyers who I, I know are interested in this. Date wise, is it actually dated? There, is a, there isn't a date on it, but it's going to be, it's going to probably be 1860s, 1870s, that area. I mean, dogs are always like rocket fuel, yeah, aren't they, when it comes to art? I mean, it's a charming picture. The frame is not everyone's cup of tea, but it's just a damn good picture. It has been relined at some point. I think there's been a little bit of restoration. Can um, we see that? Can you can you show us where it's been relined? If I take it off the wall, go for it. This is where it all goes very badly wrong, wrong, by the way. Badly wrong. So just tell us how no. you can tell it's been okay. relined. We've got the original label look. The Porcher's Couple, John Fitz Marshall. Lovely. His address on there. That's good. So you can see the canvas he has been has been relined. So the canvas looks incredibly fresh, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been yeah. relined at some point. It may indicate that it's been restored at some point. Um, the frame's probably original, but it doesn't do it any favours. So um, you you think that the frame is quite unfashionable now in the market. I, I think somebody who buys it will, will put a fresh frame on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a lovely thing. Estimate, David? Estimate six to 800. Six to 800, yeah. that seems remarkably low. It's a come and get me, if ever there was one, in my opinion. Um, I, I'm hoping it will make a couple of thousand. Wow, that's a good prediction. Well, an interesting prediction indeed. Estimated at six to eight hundred, but David Elstop reckons it might make, after speaking to a couple of American buyers, two thousand pounds. Well, here we go. Let us know how well you did. John Fitz Marshall, the Poachers Couple, a lovely canvas, or a canvas by the Birmingham artist. A lot of interest. Bids are coming in already. About bids on commission. I got bids on sale of seventeen hundred pounds, eighteen hundred. 1800 bid, my book's out already. I've got 1900 on live auctioneers. 2000 a bid from Australia on the sale reel. 2 2 on the sale reel. 2002 on the sale reel. 2 4 on the sale reel. 2004 bid. Bid from Australia, 2400. It's on the sale reel. 2004, I'll take 2006 next. 2004 bid, do I see 2006? 2004 bid. 2006 the telephone wants to come in. At 2004, then we all going to finish. Fair warning, then we're going to sell at 2,400. All well done. 2004. 2004 to buy a 1259. Thank you, bids. Good luck going down under. Wow, look at that. What a result. £2,400. It's going down under to Australia. The Americans didn't get it this time. How close were you? Next up, we've got a drop of claret waiting for us. A drop of claret? A drop of claret. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Better not be just a claret jug, David. Well, it is, but not just any claret jug. All right. 
Let's move the Claris Cliff, because we've already had tea. Oh, nice looking. Good looker, isn't it? Very good looker. Okay, I think I recognise the maker, but go on, I might be wrong, tell me. Well, a bit of local interest to this, I guess. It was made by Linthorpe Pottery. Okay, Linthorpe in Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Okay, yeah. so we're based in the northeast of England here. So Middlesbrough is w one of the local towns about an hour from here. Absolutely. Um, a, sh a relatively short-lived pottery was Linthorpe. This dates to the 1870s. Um, and of course, I guess it became best well known because Christopher Dresser designed for yeah, them. Yeah, famous, famous the design. The famous Japanese, you know, those Japanese inspired designs that you see. Although this isn't a sign piece by him, it's clearly influenced by him. You know, this, this ebonized handle and these straight lines, um, clearly displaying those uh, Japanese inspiration. And date wise, David? 1870s. 1870s, yeah, bang on, same. right. Yeah. Okay. So, right in the middle of that aesthetic movement, really. And, and that is extreme quality, isn't it? Oh, yeah, no, it's a great joke. I mean, I've, I've sold a lot of Linthorpe in my time, I've sold hundreds and hundreds of pieces. I've not come across a claret jug before. Very good looking. And Majolica? You know, with this, well, strictly speaking, it's not Majolica, but I can see where you're coming from with that, with that heavy glaze. The, green, the greens are certainly what you'd see in the Majolica. And then it's got the model number on the bottom, Linthorpe impressed mark. What I find really remarkable about that is the modern lines. If you think about this is yeah. a 150-year-old claret jug, yet you would make it today if you had the talent and the skill yeah. in that shape because it's modern. Well, Christopher Dresser was all about that. You know, if you look at his toast racks and things like that, it's all straight lines, geometric. They're very avant-garde. This was incredibly avant-garde in its day. It was almost a futurist. Yeah. Yeah. He sort of predicted the future when it comes to design and yeah. shape. That is gorgeous. Right, but what is the estimate? Two to three hundred. Whoa, what a cracking thing for very little money, I think. Two to three hundred, I think it'll make top end and a bit more. What about you? I think it'll make top end of that estimate range. I think okay. 260, 280, that area. Okay, yeah. I still think it'll be a bargain at that. And don't you think it looks remarkably modern? It's amazing that it's 150 years old. Very cool thing, really Great ahead thing, of its yeah. time. Okay, two to 300? Yep. What do you think? Let us know how close you get to the final hammer price. Here we go. Good luck. Three, two. 169 Linthorpe Pottery Claret Jug in the manner of Christopher Dresser. Fabulous thing. It isn't signed, but you clearly see Dresser's influence in it. A rare piece. Lots of interest in this. I mean, go at £480 on the sale. I've got 480 bid. 480 bid. So the sale went 480. Do I see 500? 500 on the telephone. 550. No. 550 bid on the sale at 550. Do I see 600 anywhere? At 550 bid, then are we all going to finish? Fair warning then, at 550, all done. 550 to buy 1393. Thank you very much. 550 pounds, that smashed both of our expectations there. How close were you? Well, I've got our third lot coming up here. And I just, this highlights what fabulous value country furniture is. Let's go and have a look. Oh, David, that is gorgeous. Tell us about it. It's a little beauty. Found this in a house locally, a lovely late 18th century oak dresser base, all banded in mahogany and the drawer fronts are banded in mahogany. We have the original engraved brass escutcheons and the original handles as well. So and late 18th century, late 1770, 1790? Yeah, that area. Um, a nicely shaped apron. I mean, a, a country piece of furniture, but a good quality and a kind of a streamlined piece of country furniture, if you like. You know, it's, it's just a bit better. Um, nice and dry inside the drawers which you want to see now when you say nice and dry what do you mean well if the timbers and things had been changed then it, it, they'd put new timber in there it wouldn't be look as dry but you want to see plenty of dust and dryness and the locks are original got lovely iron lock plates they're all there 
That's, that's a lovely thing, a nice, in nice condition, and a lovely size. Something would really go in a modern house. It would, that's it's got size. that modern look, and it's a great color, isn't it? Yeah, fabulous color, which is always important with oak. I mean, people, it's all about the color for the oak men. Um, you know, they, they want this kind of chewed toffee color to it. Well, um, that's what beeswax does, grime, dust, yeah. muck, Hat wine. Just handling. Handling. Oil off the hands. Absolutely. Um, it's just a, it's a lovely thing and you know, it's just great value for money. I mean, it's been around for over 200 years and it'll be around for another 200. And you couldn't get any more eco-friendly than this. Absolutely not. It's, it's the best form of recycling, isn't it? Yeah, never mind that. What about the money, David? What's it worth? What's the estimate? Three to 500. Three to 500 pounds sounds remarkable value for money to me. Now, what, 20 years ago, this would be how much? Could be a couple of thousand, couldn't it? Yeah, 2,000 pounds 20 years ago. The market has changed dramatically, but I think David's going to agree with me here. My prediction, our prediction is, this period furniture is now increasing in value and now is the time to buy it. There has never been a better time in history, that's some statement to make, <laughs> to buy period good furniture like this. Do you agree? I, absolutely. Because it's tapping into that eco-friendliness. There's talk about it in the media now about antiques being eco-friendly. You couldn't get any more eco-friendly than that and you couldn't get better value for money. So what's your prediction? What's the hammer price going to be? I think it'll make six or seven hundred. Six or seven hundred, and it should do as well. In fact, there we've got a buyer. He's just walked past camera. <laughs> he'll he'll be bidding on it. There's no doubt about it. Six to seven hundred. I agree with you. So, what do you think? Let us know how close you get to the final hammer price. Good luck. Zero zero four four zero zero four. Six three five. So George the third mahogany banded oak dresser base. A lovely small dresser base. Nice, proper, genuine piece of country furniture from a house in Masson. Our statue, I've got 600 on the sale room, 600 bay, 600 bay on the sale room, 600. Do I see 650? 600 bay, 650 on the sale room, 650 bay, 700 anywhere, 700 if you want. I know you like it, 650 here, it's 650 on the sale room, at 650 bay, 700 if anyone wants. At 650 bid, don't lose it. At 650 bid, at 650, then we all done and finished. Fair warning, at 650, all done and finished. At 650, all done. 650 to buy 1574. Look at that. Remarkable value for money for a 250 year old eco warrior piece of furniture. And I'm not even being flippant. That is the most environmentally friendly piece of furniture you could possibly buy anywhere on the planet. Fabulous value for money. Take it from me. Prices for Georgian pieces like this are now increasing. So not only are you an eco-warrior by buying it, you're making a great financial investment. Thanks for watching, everybody. From me, David Harper, and from David Elstop. Until next time, cheerio.